Bush there. Hey, look at that! Have you ever seen anything like that? And here comes Hurst. He's got some people on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. I think it's all over. And in a bid to eradicate swearing from this program, it's been suggested that we introduce swear boxes with all proceeds going to children in need, which, if you ask me, is a f good idea. <laughs> Who decides what's a swear word and what isn't? But if I was to say beef truncheon, would that be considered out of line? No. Cheese chisel. Apparently not. <laughs> Flesh flute. <laughs> Whittacum. <laughs> in certain cultures, other words that we find perfectly acceptable are indeed foul. For example, in Japan, linico is the worst insult you can hurl at someone. <laughs> it means a lazy f <laughs> That's a pound. Hang on, I better get ready for this. <laughs> With David and Jonathan... <laughs> With David and Jonathan is a top heavyweight who so far has earned a million pounds for a professional career spanning just over 20 minutes. That's <laughs> almost as much money per minute as Gary earned in Japan. <laughs> Audrey Harrison... With Gary and Rory is an award-winning comedian and actress who actually specified that she wouldn't go on David's team tonight because she didn't want to sit next to a public schoolboy and a gobshite. Although she's apparently happy to sit next to a beardy lard arse and a jugged. <laughs> Fiona Allen. All the money for the kiddies. <laughs> we open the show with our sporting bluff round, Gary, Rory and Fiona. Here's our very own Audley Harrison in training for his latest pro fight. <laughs> Lovely shot from Harrison, hands held on, but the left one in right at the end there was an absolute peach. Nice hair, Audley. <laughs> Was that ring properly earthed? <laughs> Research has proved that training is not as good for boxers as sleeping. Research has proved that training is not as good for boxers as doing pub quizzes. Research has proved that training is not as good for boxers as staring at ladies' breasts for half an hour. <laughs> David, you... Hello. You've been known to fall asleep at the crease, haven't you? Yep. So your wife tells me. <laughs> We might need you to sort him out later on. Hurry up, darling. Hurry up, darling. Gatting's in next. <laughs> if you want to get all the onto him, just tell him that he's taking the piss by having his hair like that. <laughs> Actually, talking of quizzes, weren't you rather humiliating on I Want to Be a Millionaire the other day? I've got, I've got a face fact. Yeah. I, Did you all see? Anyone, uh, anyone not see that? Who stole seven grand off those poor children? <laughs> Oh, the best thing about it was 45 minutes of that programme, he never said one single <laughs> word. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was mildly embarrassing, but I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't think we'd even get through the fastest finger thing. I got all those wrong. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the fourth round, I was feeling quite tired. And the sixth round, it went on point... Oh, no, I'm sorry, that was your weekend, Audley. <laughs> You'd have been good at the fastest finger round, quite honestly. Well, uh, they were fast, believe me, but they weren't touching all the right buttons. <laughs> I mean, if you want the truth, yeah, I did feel like a complete and utter... Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I've come prepared. I've got enough here for all of us to use the F word a few times, and that's what I call me <laughs> money. And, and, and that, that's what the people who pay you call it as well. <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> Sleeping, pub quizzes, and staring at women's breasts for half an hour. Okay. What about girls? Do girls stare at other women's breasts? Yeah, they do. Who do you admire? The Rory's are good. They're not bad, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> They're not quite Colin Montgomery, but they're getting there, aren't they? <laughs> Let's plump for the answer, shall we, Gary? <coughs> you plump. <laughs> I think it's sleeping, which I think Audley said. So you think Audley told the truth? Let's see if you're right. <laughs> Yes, 
Audrey was telling the truth. A study at the University of San Diego has shown that sleeping is a form of training and does more good than an hour down the gym. However, hundreds of newspapers all over the world have inadvertently reported a hoax story, allegedly from the New England Journal of Medicine, claiming that half an hour spent ogling breasts is equivalent to a good training session. Actually, it's not always true that sleep is the best training. The Chinese swimming team are brilliant, and they've been awake continuously for several months now. <laughs> The American researchers also claim that 80% of men regularly have dreams about other men. That was from a survey of 117 randomly selected males in the San Francisco and Brighton areas. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Audley, it's our old mucker Frank Bruno for you. Well, there are entrances and there are entrances. That was an entrance. And Bruno is close to the feet at this moment. He's going to go down, he's going to go down. Witherspoon's got him in the 11th round and Bruno goes over and Witherspoon's hit him while he's on the floor. And the town has come in from Terry Morris. It's all over. It's all over. Now, earlier this year, while playing Buttons at the Milton Keynes Theatre, Frank announced that he was to become the Tory candidate for Brentwood and Ongar. However, the Tory party stepped in and blocked his ambitions. What was the official reason? Gary's team. He refused to give up his panto career. It's mm -hmm. amazing. You did that without even looking at it. I did, didn't I? Um, he publicly insulted... <laughs> yeah. And you f***ed up and you were reading it. <laughs> <laughs> He publicly insulted Mrs. Thatcher oh. as a young man. <laughs> <laughs> Political joke, man. <laughs> there is already a Tory candidate for Brentwood and Ongar. So, was Frank thwarted because of his love for Panto, his attacks on Mrs. Thatcher, or because there already is one? David's team. Mm. Frank Bruno's standing. It's mm. a novelty, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Audley, is it true that you took up... Audley, uh, why do you call him Audrey? Audley, I think. <laughs> Audley, is it true you took up boxing after you saw Sylvester Stallone in the Rocky movies? Yeah. Because it's very... Partly, partly. You guys have got something in common because David took up cricket after he saw Dustin Hoffman in Tootsie. Do you remember that? <laughs> Rain, man. <laughs> but I was watching that, the, the fight on Saturday, at least I think it was a fight. And um, there was one bit which, which really, it moved, it moved me. I'll be honest with you, Audley, it moved me. Because there was a moment where the, where the camera panned round and there was a young fella in the audience looking up at you, just a young boy, mm. looking through the thick national health spectacles he was wearing. And, <laughs> and at one moment when the action looked like getting vaguely interesting, he, he tried to stand in support on his little calipers. <laughs> he was getting up. And I was wondering, when are you fighting him? I can't remember what the day was. <laughs> <laughs> should I put one in there? Should I yeah. put one in there? You can, one. Go on, call me you can one. reach. F you. <laughs> Now there's a belt I'd pay to see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I think <laughs> was missing. <laughs> an MP. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Who knows? It's a very poor idea. Swear, <laughs> well, I don't know. He's got the love of the people. Really? Yeah. Do you know he's never voted? And he can't spell it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I confess something that well, you might find quite shocking, Audley? Yeah. Even though I'm a Labour voter through and through, and I was even a member of the party for a brief period in the Bow area. <laughs> when Mrs Thatcher used to come on TV, I used to feel a little sexual tingle. <laughs> there used to be a little fist on, I'll come clean now, I'm old enough to deal with it. I don't know whether it was those high neck polyester blouses she used to wear, or the, the solid rock that passed for hair on her head, but... More than once I lost my deposit when she was on the screen, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> It wouldn't be the Panto career. Panto career. Panto career. Panto career. Thatcher there already not, was. No, there already, there already was. It was a perfectly decent candidate already there. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, let's see if Rory was telling the truth. Well done. So, Rory knew the score. Frank Bruno's announcement that he was going to stand as the Tory candidate for Brentwood and Ongar came as a surprise to the sitting MP, Eric Pickles, who'd already been chosen as the official candidate. Bruno genuinely wanted to stand under the slogan, Don't be a plank, vote for Frank. <laughs> it's true. There was a similar fiasco recently when Chris Eubank applied to stand for the Central Thothiolist Association of South <laughs> The selection meeting had to be abandoned when saliva reached knee height. 
Curiously, Anne Widdicombe has announced that she's thinking of taking up boxing, although it'll be a good two years yet before Audley's ready for her. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. It's excuses time now. Gary's team, it's boy racer Wunderkin turned washed up no hoper Jensen Button for you. Now, of course, the fact that Jensen keeps being lapped by the safety car has nothing to do <laughs> with poor driving or his uncompetitive Benetton. So what officially is the real reason for Jensen's poor performance? Does he get car sick when he sits in the front? <laughs> When his feet reach the pedals. <laughs> Every time he stops in the pit, does he say, we're nearly there yet? <laughs> You've got a little baby. How old's your baby, Fiona? My baby's nine months old. Mm. Yeah. So what's her name? Honey. Honey? Honey Carillo, Parkinson. Are <laughs> <laughs> you half Spanish? Yeah. You speak Spanish? A little. Gary speaks Spanish. I speak Spanish. Let's do some swearing in Spanish. Cojones! <laughs> <laughs> He's got a good panto name, hasn't he? Jensen Button. <laughs> well, the he couldn't be in a, a pantomime, could he? Because the audience couldn't shout out, He's behind you! Oh, no, our mistake, there's no one behind you. <laughs> there was something about... It was, was he talking about... I saw something in the paper about Jensen Button had said, and it didn't sound very likely to me, that that the opposing team had, st had spied on the manufacturer, his car manufacturer. You need a little bit more than that, with the help of? Uh, the, uh, the, the, about the East German Secret Police. It's correct for three points, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all to do with former East German spies. According to technical director Jean Jacques, ex-members of the East German Stasi have been hacking into the Renault computers and stealing designs for Button's new engine, forcing him to scrap his work and start all over again. Jensen Button's mum said recently I'd be just as proud of Jensen if he drove a road sweeping cart. Well, Mrs. Button, give it a month or two. <laughs> rumours that they're going to dispense with his services, Jensen Button will definitely be kept on by Benetton next year. He's going to be a Saturday girl in the Croydon branch. <laughs> David Steen, your excuse concerns newly crowned US Open champion Leighton Hewitt. Here he is losing to Pete Sampras at Queen's a couple of years back. <laughs> Six, six, four, Hewitt then went from looking like this to looking like this and beat Sampras to win this year's US Open finals. So what was his hair-based excuse for being rubbish in the past? David's team. Can we go back to that first one? Yeah. Was he sick to death of being mistaken for Jonathan? <laughs> You've got a point there. Sweet mother Mary, I feel I've been lied to. I must confess, some 20 years ago I shared a night of passion with Martina Navratilova. She swore she was on the pill, but look at that. Peyton, if you're watching, son, it's not too late. Give me a call, we can make up for those lost years. I'll, I'll take you to the zoo and we can watch Pete Sampress sitting in his tyre. Of course, after a night with me, Martina, took, shall we say, the other path. <laughs> and that's to be expected, because when you've eaten at the very top table, there's nowhere else to go but there. <laughs> you know, it makes sense. You are so cocky sitting there with your foppy hairdo. <laughs> you want me so bad, it hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> I do, I do. Of course I do. You're going to have to form a cue, I'm afraid. All he's in front of you, he's already staked his claim. <laughs> No, I'm, the, I'm your, you know, door supervisor, making sure they're coming one at a time. A apparently, I'm his bitch. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you sit there like a giant green fly. <laughs> He's buzzing tonight. And yet still, your tonight. wife wants yeah. me more than any other man. <laughs> Is that a fake tan you wear tonight, or, or have Walkers introduced a new brand of tandoori flavoured? <laughs> You know, I have, a, I have a theory that I'd like to share with the Please. nation, if I may, Nick. Please. I think that the better looking you are, the worst you are at sport. <laughs> Maybe a pin-up for the HRT generation. 
as you all know, absolute shite at cricket. <laughs> and then we look at your man Lineker over there. Scored 48 goals in a long and glittering career for England. Hardly surprising. When he used to play with Beardsley running up the pitch, the defenders didn't know whether to tackle him or give him a donation. <laughs> It's a looks-based question, that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're a good-looking fella. That would explain Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> is this something to do with sort of speed around the court, or is it it's improving his... Um, it's correct for three points. Eric <laughs> <laughs> Right, according to Hewitt, his straggly long hair had been seriously slowing him down, and his number one haircut now enables him to move around the court much faster. Sampras blamed his defeat to Hewitt in the US Open final on an injury he picked up earlier in the tournament. He badly grazed his knuckles walking. <laughs> he also damaged his back moving a piano. <laughs> and the scores at the end of that round are David's team with six points and Gary's team with six points. It's our injury board now. Each team must choose a number between 1 and 12 to reveal a sports person and something that hurt them. We want to know what tale lies behind the injury. Gary's team, you've got first choice. Number 10, please. Number 10. David. So that's Stephen Gerrard and a set of teeth. How was the England and Liverpool midfield leg biter laid low by some gnashes? What are those two things hanging down from his shorts? <laughs> That's why he's praying. Yeah. Not he's praying, yeah. I want a bollock reduction. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Can I just say, that was 10p that you put in. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> that was 5p. <laughs> you had a strange injury, wasn't well, you? Go, what, didn't you pull a hamstring in your ear? <laughs> it's, a, it's a fresh twist on an old fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a new one, isn't it? <laughs> He, he went was, abroad and they was... said if he take his wisdom teeth out, it'll help his injuries that he was susceptible to. Is the correct answer for three points. <laughs> yep. Stephen Gerrard was cured of his persistent groin and back injuries when a French dentist removed his wisdom teeth. Apparently, there's a theory in France that many injuries have their root in dental problems. The wisdom tooth removal cost Stephen Gerrard upwards of £20,000. He could have saved himself a lot of money. He could have just called Roy Keane a puff. <laughs> David Steen, pick a number, please. Three, please. Number three. <laughs> So that's the taxi driver's favourite, Dennis Wise, and the toilet. So how was the oft-dismissed munchkin wounded by a Kazi? David's team. Did he pick a fight with a toilet duck? <laughs> <laughs> but what's a toilet duck? Don't you know what the toilet duck is? A toilet duck is brilliant. It's a what's toilet it? cleaner with hooks around like that, and you can squirt under the edge. Oh. Just because Mrs L has to do all the chores at home while you sit around chatting to Mark Lawrence and Graham Lassau, doesn't mean there's not a bit of work going on. Oh. The lady at the house, who I refer to as lovely Michelle, <laughs> is working her fingers to the bone so you have a decent hug to come up to. And shame on you, Lineker. Shame on you, you f. <laughs> Nick, take that. I'm just getting started. Go on. <laughs> you want to go in the toilet, my friend? It's a wonderland of fun and games. I tell you, if you want a really good day out, go in one of the disabled toilets. They're big. <laughs> There's all things to hang off of and swing on. <laughs> I take my kids down there instead of the park on a rainy day. It's brilliant. Of course, I'd like to point out we use a toilet swan. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no idea what happened to Dennis Wise in the toilet. Any ideas you've given up? Dennis Any ideas Wise, over here? You? Gary? No. Nope. OK, nobody knows. The answer is, in fact, that at the end of a quiet night out with friends in the King's Road, Dennis, clearly unused to alcohol, was vomiting in the gents... Yes. ...when he slipped over and banged his head on the toilet, knocking himself out. Well, we got that, then. <laughs> we just got that, didn't he? He said that before Nick, didn't he? No, 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 no. He got it on the auto cue. No, he do you think he should have that point? Definitely. Definitely. Tell Nick. Three points to David, then. <laughs> no, 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 oh, no, no, no. Oh. Oh. Yeah? yeah. I'll, be the, hey, I'll be the hardest f fight you've had. <laughs> it's all for children in need. <laughs> you don't think I can read that far from this age, at this age, do you? From this age, from this no. Age. <laughs>
Wise later claimed to have drunk half his own body weight in lager and then started on a second pint. <laughs> Now he's at Leicester, the city's poshest restaurant has announced Wise won't be welcome there. The manager said, I don't care if he has been to a harvester before, he's not coming in this one. <laughs> oh, Mr Stoke. And, yeah, exactly, I'm, I'm <laughs> such a posh place. <laughs> and the scores at the end of that round are David's team with nine points and Gary's team with nine points. Yeah. Well, harvester wouldn't come to Stoke. for our regulars to touch up a total stranger as we play field of sportsmen. It's David and Jonathan oh. first this week, if you'd like to take your position. Yeah. Blindfolds on, you have the traditional 90 seconds to work out who you're fundling. I'm ready for some hot one-on-one -on -one action tonight, David, I tell you. I told them off after last week when we had that fellow in the bikini. <laughs> tell you what, a couple of weeks you won't need that blindfold, will you? What with your cataracts? Go on. <laughs> OK! Can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay, and you can start your feeling now. They playing conkers? Wood <laughs> Is that you, David? No, I don't think oh, so. Oh, it's someone else with the bad hair. <laughs> Is it the cast of Starlight Express? <laughs> hey, <I'm> steady on. <laughs> Not until I've seen the cash. Hey, what have you done to them? They've gone. Well, they've gone. Have you felt them up again? You know what, I've told you You dirty, this. filthy bastard. You've got your straight up, haven't you? Have you gone? Hang on, they're back. They're back with us. What's going on? Is that woodpecker? It's, it's, it's one other way. I've got one. Still, for God's sake. David, when you get one this time, hold on to this and it can't run off again. <laughs> oh, he's a big fella. I've got him. <laughs> David, get me in there. Get me in there. I've got him. He's not getting away from me. Come here. You cheeky bugger. Come here. I've got him. I'm getting him. David, I've got him. I've got him. I've got him. Feel him. Tell me who it is. He's a big fella. Come on. You've got to sound like an ice hockey man. David, get him. Quick. <laughs> Team, team! He's got away from me! Yeah, I'll give you three points. Well done, who was our wife? Oh, good dear. Well done. You're a second, aren't you? The England World Hockey Team, well done. Gary and Rory, take your positions. I know what the Mrs. Susan, you know. OK, can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> and your time starts now. Ah! <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what do you mean? It's over there. <laughs> it's machine gun fire, Gary. <laughs> 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 I think I heard, uh, was it Audley's hairdryer revving up? <laughs> well, they're putting the bolts in, in Yap Stam's neck. <laughs> well, what's this? I'll, see, I'll see if this comes off. <laughs> I wouldn't give you 200 quid for this, mate. It's like, what's this? <laughs> it's, no, it's not moving, is it? Jensen Button. <laughs> Jensen. Oh, God. What car is it? McLaren? Williams? Skoda? <laughs> Arrows. Arrows. Yeah. Um, 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 I'll give you the three points for that. Yes, it's Jos Verstappen and his Arrows car. Yeah. I haven't got that. <laughs> And so the scores at the end of that round are David's team with 12 points and Gary's team with 12. <laughs> we close matters with the name game and all our answers this week are the names of teams. The leaders goes first, which is neither team, so alphabetically we'll let David's team go. Could you pass those along to Jonathan, please? As many names as you can in 90 seconds, starting... Hold on! Hold now! On. It's a rugby union team, it's like a fish. It's a fish, it's the name of a fish. 
Brill, yeah. Bream. When you give someone he a good scene, though, you... He said it, he said it. He said it like the wrestler, they should I sometimes blank you out. Here we go. <laughs> this is... It's a tug-of-war team. They, they do exactly what it says on the team. Yeah. Woodstain, it's sort of... It's, you got the first part right, OK. Well, the second one is like, um, it's like, uh, it's like if you give a child a little sure, sweet sure, or something, sure, you give sure, them sure. a... Give a dog treat, something. Treat, it's treat. a treat, and then if it was a, a, a bigger word than treat... treat. That's right, wood treatment. OK, here we go. You remember the song? Shake the womb by DJ Jazzy Jeff. Come on, Jazzy boom, Jeff and the Fresh Prince. The boom, boom, boom. Thank you very much indeed. Here you go. Okay, so this is a boat racing team. You know on those special occasions. Bream coming out first. You know on those special occasions. You know on those special occasions. Bream in wood treatment. Would you shut the f up? <laughs> when you put on the makeup and the hair. Oh yeah. And you go to the gay bars. What are you in? I don't know. I, 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 you could answer that question yourself. Apart from in paradise, Aldi, what are you in? <laughs> There was Drag. a Bruce Lee film, Enter the Drag Something it. On. Drag. Drag. Drag's the first you one. You said okay. that about two seconds ago. And when you're boxing... He's ignoring me. Just, when you're boxing... It's one of those things... When you're boxing... Drag. Drag. Will you shut up? Drag. It's like when my Please. grandpa used to come out of Christmas. He used to talk all the way through the movie. <laughs> and now it's you. <laughs> What's a small nail okay. you used to put a poster on the wall? <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes <laughs> blue. Attack. Thank you. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, thank heaven. <laughs> OK, David Schindler, who's gone to 16-5, will win it for you. Pass those on to Rory, please. You have 90 seconds. Starting now. This is a four on team. Uh, the first thing is a, is a fruit and a colour. Orange. Yeah, and uh, what's he called on here? Orange. Uh, orange, orange, orange. Indeed. This is, uh, I think it must be a lesbian club in Yorkshire. Um, <laughs> It's a rugby league team from a place to the west of Leeds, and it's a, it's a male cow. Lots of male oh, cows. Bradford Bulls. Very good indeed. This is uh, <laughs> a Zaire football team, apparently, and uh, the first bit is what an Indian lives in. TP. TP, very good. And uh, the first name of that uh, 19th century composer, Humperdinck, was... Engelbert. Correct. This is... <laughs> <laughs> it's a South Korean <laughs> football team. And um, the, the last bit is uh, very fast, the fastest land animal, and it's what they call Cheetah. Oh, cheetah, yeah. that's right, yeah. And the first word is when you're not unlucky, you are... Lucky. lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, lucky will do fine, don't you worry, mate. Um, <laughs> and this is a colour, a very valuable colour. Gold. And something that shines at night. Little sort of twinkly Star. things. Very good indeed. Uh, this is the first word. Uh, the second word is... Um, <laughs> <laughs> the second bit is... Do you remember um, Fanny and Johnny Craddock? Yeah. He used to have a cookery programme. And on one famous occasion, Fanny was making this ring-shaped sweet meat with eggs, flour and sprinkled with sugar on it. And Johnny Craddock said at the end, oh, that was lovely and I hope all your turn out like Fanny's. <laughs> Donuts. Very good indeed. And the Don't first well. word... Is <laughs> jam. No, it's sort of uh, meaty, uh, you know, blah, sort of pink and meaty and fleshy. Much fleshy, yes. Uh, he's this very is. Good. He's better than you. <laughs> but look what, what he's got to work with. I've got the old man. You're not doing justice. That's up. So at the end of that round, David's team have 16 points, but this week's winner is Gary's team with 17. <laughs> Thanks to David, Jonathan and Audley, Gary, Rory and Fiona, we're all off to round up another fat bloke for Audley to fight. <laughs> <laughs> they think it's all over. It is now.